Former President Donald Trump's criminal trial continued this morning with a word from the judge. The judge telling him your gag order does not mean you can't testify. Trump is charged with scheming to buy and bury stories about porn stars and playmates that would hurt his 2016 presidential campaign. Prosecutors say he falsified business records to hide those payments. Trump says he is innocent. Let's go on the scene right now to Lower Manhattan. Our national political correspondent, Alex Miller, outside the courtroom. And Alex, today, Hope Hicks was on the stand. Tell us what happened. Well, she just got on the stand. She was the third person to be on the stand this morning, but arguably the most important witness we have heard from so far because she's one of the closest people to the former president during the time period in question. She started working for him back in 2014 for the Trump Organization. Quickly after that, he formed that exploratory committee to run for president. She was promoted through the ranks, serving as his press secretary of the 2016 campaign. She eventually worked in the White House, but obviously the time in question right now is that 2016 presidential campaign and uh, everything that happened on that with the negotiations that happened with Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal. When Hope Hicks got on the stand this morning, the first things out of her mouth was to tell the jury that she was very nervous. She said it was an honor to work for the Trump administration, an opportunity that she could not pass up, but that she had not spoken to the former president since summer or fall of 2022. So, Alex, that being said, um, did Hope Picks tie the former president to, first of all, Stormy Daniels and also to the issue of whether or not any hush money payments to Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal had to do with embarrass embarrassing Melania Trump or whether they had to do with the campaign itself? We have not gotten to that point just yet. The, the prosecution is really laying the groundwork. She's likely not going to be going anywhere for quite some time. They've probably got a lot of questions for her. Uh, they started out specifically, we are focused right now on the Access Hollywood tape, talking about the environment in which that was received to the campaign. First, it was sent uh, to Hope Hicks, the transcript of the tape from a Washington Post reporter who was going to break the story, and that he was asking for comment. And so we kind of looked learned what the process was like when she had to describe what was on the tape. She said, Mr. Trump and Billy Bush are having a very inappropriate conversation about a woman. She immediately forwarded this to the other top campaign officials. And even though the transcript was included, the audio of the tape wasn't included. And so she told the other campaign officials that for now, the plan was to deny, deny, deny. Then eventually they got in a room with uh, then candidate Donald Trump. He said that he didn't actually think it was himself on the tape, even though, again, they had not heard the tape yet. He said it didn't sound like something that he would say. Eventually, they came up with a plan to put out a post, uh, to put out a video statement, which was played twice before the court, uh, where he talked about uh, that he felt bad for this statement, that it was out of character for him. Then later in other social media posts, he uh, called it locker room talk. So we kind of just really heard exactly how uh, things were going on behind the scenes. She basically described it as panic mode for about 36 hours after that Access Hollywood tape dropped. We talked about uh, the debate that happened when he was asked about it and, and the impact that it had on the candidacy, namely with uh, other Republican politicians like Mitt Romney, like Paul Ryan, like Mitch McConnell, who really wanted nothing to do with him after that point. And so it's been an interesting morning to hear from her. They're sitting, Hope Hicks and Donald Trump, just a couple of feet from each other. They have not, to my, to the best of what I can see, made eye contact, but he, the former president, is very intent on watching her. He has a little monitor on his table. That's really where he appears to be paying attention, but he has been fixated on that monitor all morning, Dell. Our national political correspondent, Alex Miller, live on the scene for us in New York City today. Alex, thank you very much.